Well, if you look at the simple fact that just in the United States, 40 million people lost their jobs and livelihoods. And in that short period of the lockdown, billionaires walked away with 434 billion additional wealth while the economy is supposed to be locked down. So the first thing it tells you is they don't need a running economy to get richer. So money is making money. People's knowledge, people's friendships are making money. That's what Facebook does. You know, you interact with your friends and they get the money. And they get the money to sell your data without your permission, either for advertising or for political management. Now, we know with colonization how without doing anything, you can become wealthy. India was 25% of the global economy till the Europeans who were in misery at that time realized, why should we be paying for pepper and gold? Why should we be paying for these textiles and so much money? Um, even Columbus was trying to come to India, but then they created the East India Company and the British just announced the land was theirs. They just announced it was theirs. And they created a whole new system. It was called Lagan, taxing the original land, the peasants, and making them pay, which is why we had 60 million people die of famines in the short British rule. 60 million Indians were exterminated. How many Australian Aboriginal people were exterminated? 90% of the Native American people were exterminated. But this extraction of wealth in the form of rent incomes is what digital dictatorship is about. And therefore they just sit back and create new colonies, carve out new places, which become their rent collection centers. This new system only extracts our data as their capital, mines it, and then sells it back to us. But isn't selling it back to us, the convergence of political control and profit making is total. So if in the period of globalization, we saw independent public states working for the welfare of the people become corporate states working for corporate welfare, we are now seeing the digital robber barons turning our states into partners for a whole new corporate surveillance state. And I'm saying this is an invasion. If continents were invaded in us colonialism, our bodies are being invaded and being turned into controlled objects to mine. We've seen what disastrous results colonization did. Australia, if only they had let the Aboriginal people guide how the settlers should live, the forest fires wouldn't have been devastating like they've been in Australia. They devastated the indigenous knowledge and the indigenous culture. If 200, 300 years of colonization in Australia, 500 years of colonization of the Americas, few hundred years of colonization of India have ruined our land, the earth, our farming, and our health. Can you imagine? You won't even need a decade of our food and agriculture in the hands of the digital barons to render this earth totally incapable of supporting human life. They want farming without farmers. They want giant sized monocultures with surveillance drones and spraying Roundup from the skies. We need more eyes on the land. We need more hands on the land. We need more biodiversity and friends on the land. Diversity is resilience. Mm -hmm. We know that in ecology, we know that in life. And that is why there is a fear of diversity. There's a fear of life. You know, I'm an eco-feminist. And for me, eco-feminism means you just recognize the earth is alive. And you recognize women aren't a dumb second sex. We are equal human beings and the earth is very, very much alive. She's Gaia. Just that simple recognition is what we need to bring back. And at the time where this is growing all over the world, young people are throwing anthropocentrism out. They're throwing racism out. At that point, the digital barons are trying to bring back a crude Cartesian logic. Each of us has the power to know truth and we have the power to stand with truth and against dishonesty, 
falsehood lies. And at this point, the digital barons are the spin masters. And it's not just they are that they are harvesting the COVID crisis for becoming richer. Think of it. They control all of the communication. If they want to put out a fake message, Facebook, YouTube, and if they want to silence, you know, over the years, over 20, 30 years of fighting GMOs, we watched how the poison cartel scientists silenced every good scientist. So we have to really be very alert to the new dictatorship. And the new dictatorship is a strange dictatorship because, you know, the first colonialism needed slaves. This dictatorship wants to get rid of large numbers of people, throw away people, 90%, we won't need you. You're not fitted to the digital world. And then for the rest who'll be in the digital world, we are the slaves from whom extraction happens. Amazing system. We need far more economic analysis of what this system is about. We need far more political analysis. We need far more ecological analysis. And we definitely need a lot of our energies to go into defending the systems that have tried, tested, proven, strengthening them, and through Satyagraha, refusing to allow them to un be undermined. The climate issue is not separate from the biodiversity issue. The biodiversity issue is not separate from healthy systems of growing food. So these interconnections are being made by more and more people. And because the digital barons have now invaded into our bodies as the new colony. It's from our bodies we built the alternative of working with the earth to grow organically, regenerating the soil, but not just, you know, to me, the reason when we founded the regeneration movement that it's so powerful is here we have a degeneration system, degenerated minds of mechanical thought, degenerating economies, creating poverty, degenerating the planet's living ecosystems, degenerating our food and created, creating disease. And here is regeneration and all it needs is a partnership with biodiversity and the soil and the sea. And we regenerate health, we regenerate the climate, we regenerate democracy, we regenerate economy. This is the time. The rubber barons will use all the force they can. But what my lessons from our freedom movement have been, force used with brute power can never be strong enough against the force of life and love in interconnected.